Hello, my name is Lilith Boldby, and I founded a Gender and Sexuality Alliance Club at my middle school in 2018. When I graduated, I took over as student club advisor, organizing meetings, events, and connecting with the students. I had heard about the benefits of GSA clubs and even experienced bullying in my school. I was excited for the idea and the challenge of creating a club, but no one told me how big the challenge would be or the reality of running a club, especially one affiliated with LG Plus Matters. Today, I'll be discussing my experiences and the impact GSAs have on communities, which is something I'm really passionate about. The first step is to find out what your clubs what your school's club creation rules are and having them put into writing. I made the mistake of not having the rules in writing, just going off of my memory. This was a huge detriment for me in the future and allowed for a lot of pushback from the school, which I'll get into later. For my school, we needed a teacher to be the advisor so that we could have a room and adult supervision, of course. Luckily, I had an amazing teacher in mind and they were excited to run GSA. With that support, I worked with her to decide what our plan was. Our school needed us to have eight members sign off. Now, like I said earlier, we should have asked what the club creation rules were, rules were without telling the administration what kind of club we were thinking of making and have that into a written statement. Anyways, once we had submitted our student signatures and the intent of the club, the school told me it was too political. When I started to ask why and try to discuss, they then backpedaled and told us the club rules had changed and that we needed 14 members or so with clearer signatures. Feeling like a crooked politician, I set out to find more legitimate signatures. This was surprisingly easy. A lot of my friends and student peers seemed to be interested or in support of an LGBTQ plus club. The administration dragged their feet a bit, but the teacher advisor and I checked in every day to see how it was coming along. Finally, they approved our club. This allowed us to start thinking about the logistics of our club. The next thing we had to worry about was the basic planning. Yet, these are manners no one really prepares you for when creating a club. One question I needed to solve was when we're going to meet. This seems simple, but the administration actually put a lot of unwarranted restrictions on when our club could meet. We worked very hard and brainstormed ideas. Finally, we decided to meet at lunch every Wednesday, which worked out very well. I had to figure out what we're going to do with this club now, especially because a lot of facilitators were questioning why we had this club, or the point in general. Those questions were very hard for an autistic 12-year-old student to handle. Eventually, we all agreed that GSA is a safe space for people to come and have fun. We went to fundraisers and volunteered, had holiday parties, and even had some guest speakers come in. This, will, was, this was all organized by me and my fellow peers, which shows how powerful it can be when students advocate. Now, I thought that creating my GSA was going to be the hardest challenge I would come across. I was far from wrong. For two years, I was told that my club was too political, and I got a lot of pushback. One of the first challenges we ran into was advertising. Our club was very hidden from people. My school had a morning bulletin that all the clubs were a part of. I had my teacher advisor uh, put us on the announcement document. But after a couple of weeks of doing this, we didn't hear our club. I then wrote exactly what I wanted to be said on an index card and manually submitted it to the school's office. This worked for one week. I then asked why they weren't talking about us in the bulletin. They said I needed to write up my message on a different index card and submit it every week. I knew this wasn't true because of the information my teacher advisor had. I ended up, I ended up doing this almost every week. Another way we tried to advertise was making flyers and posters. Our club took a couple of meetings to design flyers and then took my allowance money to print out copies to pass around school. I knew this was okay because I had gotten the idea from my teacher advisor, gotten the approval from the administration before the club was created, and I felt like I saw it happen a lot. 
When we started to pass them out, though, facilitators approached me each time, telling, that, telling me that my flyers were too political, I was making the other students uncomfortable, and that I needed to stop. I did at the end of the day, after being threatened with attention multiple times. I never thought of GSA to be political, especially because many schools like that one host religious clubs on campus. We also created posters, which we were given strict restrictions on where we could post them and had some of them turned down, torn down and returned to us because they were in an inappropriate response spot. It's nice to return them though. We usually just put them back up. While there was negativity from our peers, it was unexpected that the majority was coming from the administration and the teachers as well. I had teachers come up to me telling me that my club didn't belong on their campus. We spent so much time, money, and devotion, and they literally and figuratively tore our efforts down. Whenever there was a donation or a grant, the school was very encouraging until we actually received the funds. Then they made it extremely hard for us to use the money for club-related items, like t-shirts or stickers, and put the funds in different accounts, such as counseling or even sports uniforms. There was a lot of confusion, so to minimize that, it would be good to know the rules of creating a new account for the club and who would then control the money. For example, for our school, one of the administrators of the school controlled the money because it was in their in a certain account. But if we had a separate account solely for the club, then our teacher advisor could have controlled the funds, which would allow us allow us to have an easier time um, buying things to support our club. So, what was the payoff for all these hardships? Well, something that my past self couldn't even fathom. I continued to push and communicate with my past middle school to restart the GSA. I'm, I'm so glad I did. Currently, this GSA is established and has blossomed into a thriving community. Every week, students come to meet new people, hang out, vent, laugh, and just have a good time in a safe, supportive environment. I have done some research on the impacts of GSAs, but actually seeing the positive outcomes was something truly incredible. I want to share some of their thoughts of our GSA club with you. 66% of students in the club said that they did not have a safe space before joining GSA, and 100% of students said that they now have one after joining GSA. Here are some words that they associate with GSA. Acceptive, family, open, fun, safe, and cool. Quote, always puts a smile on my face and is the light of my week, end quote. I then asked what the benefits were. Quote, kids can know if they're a part of the LGBTQ plus community way before middle school. And if they don't have accepting parents, then GSA is a good way for them to talk about their feelings, end quote. Quote, people can be themselves in middle school, end quote. Quote, the benefits would be getting to express yourself freely with no judgment, welcomed in opening arms 24-7, end quote. I then asked how they describe GSA. Quote, they don't judge. I guarantee they have saved so many people's lives, end quote. Quote, I would describe it as a wacky, wonderful safe space. No judgment, end quote. Overall, we need to have a gender and sexuality alliance club at every school. This can be hard, especially because our younger generation seems to be progressing faster than those prior. That's why I want to encourage student advocacy and building a community in schools where students have the right to seek out fellowship and collaboration on a cause they are passionate about. Promotion of visibility, normalization, validation, and togetherness 
are the core concepts of GSA. If we can have these ideas and morals introduced at a younger age, I think many will be thankful and the world can be more progressive. I hope that if you're creating a GSA club, you can use these tips and experiences to have an easier time. Thank you.